All right, problem number 17. Again, we have a very typical Algebra 1 type of a word problem. Two trains leave Chicago at the same time, traveling in opposite directions. So if this is Chicago, one is going that way, and one is going this way. And the one is traveling 60 miles per hour, while the other one is traveling 65 miles per hour. How long is it before they are 375 miles apart? Well, they're both traveling the same amount of time since they uh, leave Chicago at the same time and they're traveling for the same amount of time. So we're going to say that they travel X hours. Both of them are traveling X hours. And there is a, a, a very common formula uh, that we learn early in math, and that is that distance is equal to rate times time. And so that's exactly what we have here. We have a rate. We have time. And so we want that distance. And again, on the other side, we have the same thing. We have a rate, we have a time, and so our equation is going to be the distance to the left plus the distance to the right is going to be equal to the total distance. And we know that the total distance is 375 miles. They're going to be 375 miles apart. We don't know the distance, but we do know that distance is rate times time. So we're going to have 60 miles per hour times the number of hours plus 65 miles per hour times x hours is going to give us a total of 375 miles. And so 6065, that's 125 x equals 375. And we're just going to divide both sides by 125. And I think that comes out to be exactly 3 hours. All right. So 60 times x plus 65 times x is equal to 375. That's only true when x is 3 hours. OK, with problem number 18, we are just going to be given some formulas. Uh, this happens to be the volume of a cone. I'm not sure if you have learned the formula for the volume of a cone before but it looks something like this. If this is your height and this is your radius, then the volume of the cone is one-third times pi r squared, which is the base. Uh, pi r squared would be the area of the base uh, times the height. Without the one-third, it would be the volume of a cylinder, uh, but we don't have that whole volume, and it's just the volume of the cone. All right, so all we want to do here is to just substitute the values that we have. And we're going to use pi as 3.14. And the radius, we're told, is 3. And the height is the unknown variable. So we're just going to leave that. And we do know that the volume should be 56.62. All right, so I'm going to bring in a calculator just to do some of the simple calculations. So we have one third. That's one divided by three. That's 0.33. We're going to multiply that times 3.14 to get 1.04666 times that by three. And well, lo and behold, we get back to uh, 3.14. And I guess that would make sense since the 3 here will cancel with the 3 there. And we end up with 3.14h, 
on the other side 56 62 to solve for h we're simply going to divide both sides by 3.14 and so back to our calculator clear we have 56.62 divide that by 3.14 and so the height is going to be 16.65 h is equal to 16.65 and that's going to do it for number 18 for problem number 19 we're asked to solve the formula for the indicated variable and that would be for b so we're going to start off with p is equal to 2a plus 2b now to solve for b means to isolate b so when we're done we should have b is equal to something here so let's see what we have to do for that first thing we're going to do subtract a 2a from both sides since these are not like terms we can't really do anything with that we just have p minus 2a leaving 2b and to further isolate the b just divide both sides by 2 and we end up with b is going to equal p capital p minus 2a over 2 and so that's solving the perimeter equation again this is perimeter of a rectangle and we'll go on to number 20 all right for number 20 again we're asked to solve area is length times width times height that happens to be the formula for volume of a it could be a cube, but more generally, it's a rectangular prism. And again, all we want to do, and we can do this in one step, if the area is length times width times height, we want to isolate the h. Just going to divide both sides by length times width. So h is equal to a over length times width and we're done with that all right so the next problems will be on uh, inequalities so we'll put those all on a separate video